Good day. Today, we'll be discussing about journalizing business transactions. So what will be our objectives for this lesson? Number one is to define accounting terms related to journalizing business transactions. Then number two, explain accounting principles related to journalizing business transactions. And then three, record transactions in a general journal. So definition of terms. Journalizing, what is journalizing? It is the recording of business transactions in a journal. Double entry transact accounting, double entry accounting rather. So it's the recording of the debit and credit parts of a transaction. So that's why it's called double entry. So there should always be an entry in the debit and another entry in the credit parts, at least one for each. Reasons for recording transactions in journals. Number one is for accuracy. So it shows the debit and credit parts of each transaction in one place. So since it is in one place, then checking for the transaction, checking the transactions will be a lot easier. Chronological record of transactions is also done in a uh, in recording transactions in a journal. So the chronological record of transactions contains a day-to-day -day transactions listed according to the date of the transactions. So it will be easier for us to trace the transaction using the journal. This is now the appearance of a two-column general journal. So we have general journal and then we have the page number and we have here several columns one column for the date and maybe on the left side of the date you can also place a transaction number if you want and then on to the right of the date column we have the account titles so the account title should be based on your chart of accounts so that uh, the names or the titles will be standard then post reference so you can place here maybe the account number if you want and then we have the debit and the credit entries or credit columns. So let's have an example. The first example is journalizing a sale of an asset. So October 1 received cash from the sale of an old loan mower amounting to 5,000 wherein the receipt number is 0100. Zero, zero. So, if we try to analyze the transaction, we receive cash. So, cash is one of the account that is affected by the transaction. So, since we receive cash, cash will actually increase. But when we receive cash, we actually gave an old loan mower. So, in that case, we uh, uh, our maintenance equipment which is a loan mower will actually decrease so how do we enter the journal entry for this number one is to enter the date of the transaction so if you still remember we have a column for the date and then next after the date will be the debit account title so as I've said a while ago we're going to receive cash so cash will increase so in that case we're going to debit cash so and after we place the debit account title the amount will now be placed on the debit column so after that below the debit entry will be our credit entry so enter the credit account title so again we enter the debit first before the credit entry and we have to indent for readability so that at a glance we already know what are the accounts that are credited and what are the accounts that are debited because again the credit part is indented so and then after entering the credit account title we now enter the amount on the credit column and then 
below the transaction we place an explanation of the transaction though sometimes uh, others don't do this but maybe it will be a lot uh, it will help a lot if we place explanation so let's take a look now at the journal entry of transaction number one so as you can see here we have the date so October 1 and then we have cash so debited so under account title and then on debit side we have 5,000 and then again cash increase so it should be on the debit side because it's an asset and for the maintenance equipment it's also an asset but since we gave the uh, maintenance, the old maintenance equipment, the old loan mower, then it should be on the credit side. So if, if you notice, the maintenance equipment is indented and the amount is placed on the credit side. And below is we have the explanation. So sale of an old loan mower and then RN0100. So why do we place the receipt number? Uh, as we have said, one of the accounting principles is actually objective evidence so there should always be an evidence for each transaction so in this case it will be the receipt that will be our evidence okay so let's now proceed to the next transaction so journalizing part payment of liability so on October 1 2020 so paid cash to the soon supply company for part of amount owed so amounting to 20,000 and then we paid cash so the check number for example is check number 20 so we paid cash cash is an asset but we gave away cash we paid cash so our cash will decrease so that means cash will be on the credit side what is the other account that is affected by this Sassoon Supply Company which is actually a liability because it says here amount owed so, so Sassoon Supply Company is actually a company where we owe the amount so it's, it's a liability so the liability will also decrease and for a liability to decrease we have to debit the liability so let's check now the transaction so we have here the date the same October 1, 2020 and then we debited the account title Sassoon Supply Company. Then we entered the debit value, which is 20000 And below this is our credit entry. So again, we indent cash. So cash. And we enter the value for cash under the credit column. Then below, some sort of an explanation. Payment of liability. So check number again objective evidence so that's transaction number two let's have another transaction journalizing a revenue transaction so let's say October 2 2020 received cash from daily sales amounting to 25,000 and the reference number is 0102 so we receive cash be this an asset then that means our cash will increase so again an asset to increase you have to debit cash so in this case we have to debit cash and then the revenue which is actually uh, we, it will actually what it will actually increase capital so for a capital to increase we have to credit the transaction or the account so here is now our entry our journal entry for this transaction so we have for the date October 2 2020 then we debit cash amounting to 25,000 and we credit sales amounting to 25,000 and then our explanation sales so reference number is 0102 so that's our entry for this transaction so journalizing and expense transaction that should be n with no d so october 3 paid cash for october rent 6000 
So, check number 21. So, we paid cash, then that means our cash will decrease. So, cash is an asset, so we have to credit cash. And then, rent. Rent is actually an expense. So, since it is an expense, it will decrease capital. So, to decrease the capital, we have to debit that account. So, here is now our entry. October 3, 2020. So, we have rent expense amounting to 6000 Again, this entry should be based on the chart of accounts. So, amounting to 6000 So, it's debited. And then, we credit cash amounting to 6000 thousand so again we have the explanation paid rent expense check number 21 journalizing and additional investment by an owner so again this there should not be there should be no letter d here an additional investment by an owner so the date october 3 2020 the business received cash from harry rossi as an additional investment, so worth 50000 And the receipt number is 0101. So we receive cash. So what will happen to our cash? Our cash will increase. So for cash to increase, which is actually an asset, we have to debit cash. So if we're going to look at our entry, this is transaction number 5. So October 3, 2020, cash is debited because it will increase. So amounting to fifty thousand. Oh, sorry for that. Amounting to fifty thousand, and capital will also increase. So for capital to increase, sorry again, for capital to increase, we have to credit capital. So Harry Rossi capital also amounting to fifty thousand, and then below is our explanation, additional investment. So receipt number zero one. Zero 01. So here we have here now uh, several transactions using the journal, general journal rather. So that's how we enter general journal. Okay, so I hope uh, this will help you in, in understanding how to enter transactions using the general journal. Thank you.